Find side B if angle C is 74.2, side C is 96.3, and angle B is 39.5. So this was the first part of the chapter. What I highly recommend you do is just try to draw a triangle and see what you've got. So it doesn't have to be all that accurate, but we draw and label our parts. Angle C is 74.2 degrees, and side C is 96.3, and angle B is 39.5 degrees. So if you're watching, you've got an angle and you've got another angle and you've got a side angle, angle, side. So if you follow that flow chart, you should see that this is going to be law of signs. This is going to be law of signs. Okay. We, we should be able to figure out anything that we need using law of signs. So first thing I might do is find this missing angle. I can find angle A pretty easily because I can just um, subtract from 180. So come on calculator, let's go. If I go 180 minus 39.5 minus 74.2, missing angle is 66.3. So angle A is 66.3. Oh, I didn't read the directions. All I had to do was find side B. I don't have to solve the triangle, so I didn't even need to do that. Whatever. Um, side B, this is AAS, so this is law of signs, and law of signs says I can find side B like this. Um, I, I put a connection between these two. The side goes on the top here. And... I'm all flustered here. B was 39.5. There we go. The way I like to do it is I like to have the unknown be the first thing that I write down. To solve this, you just end up cross multiplying. And we did this a lot back in this chapter. Where'd it go? Okay. So 96.3 times sine 39.5, and then divide by sine 74.2. For some reason, this calculator doesn't like it when you hit sine twice. So it looks like B equals 63.7. B equals 63.7. Okay. Find A if little a is 340, big B is 39 degrees, and okay, so you've got three different options. So let's let's look at what we've got. They say little a is 340, and big B is 39 degrees, and then side B is 186 like this okay so if you're paying attention that's angle side side that's angle side side this is the bad one okay that's the case two that's the ambiguous case that's the one where they could ask you how many triangles there are how many triangles are there but it's definitely law of signs and we should be able to find a by establishing these connections between a side and an angle. Sine A over 340 equals sine 39 over 186. So again, I, I, uh, I put the one that I'm looking for first. I'm going to cross multiply. So 340 sine 39 divided by 186. 1.15. Okay, that's supposed to tell you something, but you have sine A equals 1.15. And when you try to try to solve this, you do an inverse sine of that answer, and it's going to give you an error. Okay, mine gives you this, this complex number, but, but yours is going to give you an error. This doesn't work, and you should remember that when this number was bigger than 1, it's not going to work, okay? So a lot of the times the question is how many triangles exist. Um, 
So no such triangle exists for this problem. If it asked you how many triangles exist, you'd say zero exists. Okay, so what if B was 286? So if B was 286, we just kind of change the calculation right here and make that 286. So sine A over 340 equals sine 39 over 286. And it's still the same calculation. We can cross multiply 340 sine 39 divided by 286. And when you get that number, you know it's going to work, but you don't know if it's going to work once or twice. 0. 0.7481. Sine A equals 0. 0.7481. I'm going to do an inverse sine of that number. I'm going to get 48.4. Okay, 48.4. But here's the deal. This equation actually has two solutions. So we have to kind of think about what we did a lot of the chapter and say sine is going to be positive in the first and the second. So we actually have two answers here. We've got 48.4 and we've got whatever 180 minus 48.4 is. 131.6. So A could equal 48.4 degrees or 131.6. Maybe. But what you have to do is you have to go back over here to your triangle and say, is there even room for it to be 131.6? Is there room for that? And still be room for a, a third angle. And so you look at your 131.6 plus 39 degrees is 170.6. There is enough room because it, it just has to be less than 180, less than or equal to 180, I guess. Um, well, the two together have to be less than 180, but your three have to be equal to 180. So anyway, you ask yourself, is there room for this number? And if there is, then it's possible. Okay. Um, two triangles exist for this question. But to answer the question, A is 48.4 or A is 131.6. That's pretty tough. So what if I change that number to 386? So if I change that number to 386 right there, it's the same exact calculation. Sine A over 340 equals sine 39 over 386. So do that same calculation. 340 sine 39 divided by 386. Okay, so that's, that's in between negative 1 and 1. So that's going to work. 0.5543. Equals sine A. We're going to do an inverse sine of that value and get 33.7. 33.7. Okay. But again, you have to think about what happens over here. Okay. 33.7, 180 minus 33.7. is 146.3. And so you go over here and you say, is there even room for 146.3 in that triangle? Okay, is there room for 146.3? Well, if you add 39, that's bigger than 180, that's too much. Okay, that's too much, that's too big. 146.3 can't possibly work. So you'd say, uh-uh, that one doesn't work. Only one triangle exists for this problem. And that angle A must be 33.7 degrees. Right? Angle side side is the tough one because that's the only one where this weirdness happens. You might have one or two or zero triangles, but that's only if it's the bad one. Okay, find A if, and it's pretty clear that this is side, side, side. 
this is the only one that's, that's obviously side, 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 but let's go ahead and label it out anyway. Side A is 86.1, side B is 253.2, and side C is 241.9. Man, these numbers are gross. And we have to find angle A. Well, this is, side, side, side is law of cosines. And law of cosines is different than law of sines, but it still needs you to establish this connection. Okay? So the law of cosines formula says, um, what does it say? It says cosine of angle A is equal to 86.1 squared minus 241.9 squared minus 253.2 squared all over negative 2 times 241.9 times 253.2. Look like that. That is um, case 4, actually. Case 4, law of cosines. So the trick is getting all that plugged into your calculator. I would recommend using parentheses around the entire top and around the entire bottom. Otherwise, you're going to get an, a weird result. So let's look at this. 86.1 squared minus 241.9 squared minus 253. Point two squared. Close the top. Divide by. Open the bottom. Negative two times two forty one point nine times two fifty three point two. So I've got the entire top in parentheses. I got the entire bottom in parentheses. And there we go. Point nine four zero oh five. And that's good because we wanted a number between negative 1 and 1. We're still going to have to take an inverse cosine to solve this. So inverse cosine of that number is 19.9. Okay, 19.9. Now, technically, if we were solving this equation in a different chapter, you'd have to say, well, cosine is positive in the first and the fourth. But if you think about it, that, that second answer is definitely going to be greater than 270. In fact, it's between 270 and 360, and that's always going to be too big. So I don't ever have to look at that second answer to this equation for this problem. I just have my answer right here, 19.9 degrees. A equals 19.9 degrees. So then down here... A is 51 degrees, side C is 68.3, and side B is 58.2. Okay, that's side angle, side. And you're supposed to recognize that's case three, law of cosines. Case three, law of cosines. Um, I want to find side A, that's this over here, and so I'm still going to establish that partnership. So law of cosines allows me to find side A. I'm going to go A squared equals B squared. Well, the other two. doesn't matter which one's B and which one's C. 68.3 squared plus 58.2 squared minus 2 times those two numbers. cosine of the angle, which is 51. Okay. So again, you've got a lot of calculator work here. Sixty-eight point three squared plus fifty-eight point two squared minus two times sixty-eight point three times 58.2 
cosine 51 degrees. Gives me something really big, 3048.96. I might be lazy when I write this down, but I'm going to leave that number in the calculator. I'm going to need to do a square root of that. Square root of that number that's in my calculator. I don't have to round it. 55.2. About 55.2. A is about 55.2. Uh, it's a side, so not degrees. 55.2. And, you know, look at your other numbers. It should be comparable to those other numbers. Okay, sure. I find the area of a triangle with this. Now that's the same numbers as before, right? 86.1, 253.2, 241. That's side, side, side. Okay. That's side, side, side. And we have a formula for that. It's Heron's formula. The area, when this is side, 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 we've got area equals square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And S is something called semi-perimeter. Or half. Half the perimeter. Okay, S is half the perimeter. So we're looking at a triangle, and we can find the perimeter easily. Just add up those numbers. That would be the perimeter, but we want half that. So uh, divide by two, 290.6. That's S. So we need to fill in all of those values into the formula. So the square root of 290.6 times 290.6 minus 86.1 times 290.6 minus 253.2 times 290.6 minus 241.9. There's a lot going on there, um, but I might let my calculator do the heavy lifting. I can actually get it to come up. Square root. Let's so use answer instead of having to type it in. Answer times, I wonder if this will work, 290.6. Answer minus 86.1 times, I don't know if this is going to work with all these answers. Answer minus 253.2. Two answer minus two forty one point nine and close the square root. Yeah, I didn't think that would work. Great. Okay, so anyway, we're just gonna have to type in the whole thing, I guess, for this one. Um, if you've got a TI, it probably will be fine. Ooh, okay, 10,403.9 square units since it's area. Next one, part B, find the area of the triangle with this information. Well, this was the same as the last one, 51 degrees and 68.3 and 58.2. This was SAS. And so let me draw this out again of A. B 
and C. Angle A was 51, and side C was 68.3, and side B was 58.2. SAS. Uh, it's been a while, but if you've got SAS, the formula for SAS is area equals one half of side one, side two, sine of the angle in between. It's hard telling if you'll have A, B, or C, so you know there's a lot of different variations, but all you have to do is take those two sides and the angle in between. So the area is going to be one half of side times other side times sine of the angle in between them. Okay, we haven't talked about this in a really long time, so this is something you might want to look at. It's a simple calculator, you know, issue once you get it plugged in. 0. 0.5 times 68.3 times 58.2 times sine 51, 1544.6. Again, units squared, because we're talking about area.